Welcome, my trading comrades. God, am I glad to see you. I'm in the mood to talk penny stocks, and there is nobody around here who wants to do that. So thanks for stopping by. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is Wednesday. It is September 18th, which means I've got my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When the market's shutting down, I'm going on. Me and my co-host, Taylor, who may or may not be there tomorrow, we'll have to see. We are taking requests for about an hour, hour and a half for stocks that you want us to look at. I share hot penny stocks with you all week. This is a chance for you to bring some hot penny stocks to us. Not me and Taylor, for everybody. I'll go over the information. If Taylor's here, she'll cover the charts. If not, I will. And we'll give you our opinions, whatever that's worth. Now, I do go by first come, first served, and I can only cover so many stocks in the time allotted. So, when I put up my announcement for this video earlier in the day, as you would presume I'd have to do, the tickers start dropping in immediately. By 4 o'clock, I've got all the tickers I can handle. So, to be fair, we reserved two places during the show for tickers being dropped during the show. And we'll grab two of those tickers. We'll grab the two hottest penny stocks. So, come on, bring them on. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays. Tomorrow. <laughs> See you then. So what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. A penny stock I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. That's what I do. I trade stocks under 5 bucks virtually every day. And I like to share with you a hot penny stock. One that has potential to make us money. And normally the way I find that is by finding a hot chart first a chart that looks like it's ready to run, and then I'll go look for some hot news. I find some hot news to match my hot chart. That qualifies as a hot penny stock to me. And that's what we're looking at right now. This is Jeff's brand, ticker JFBR. Now, I saw this earlier in the day before she broke out. She was right up underneath the 200 looking primed and Dang, I guess she was. She already broke out, but she has got a lot to offer. I think she's going to pull back, bounce on that 200, and take off again. So we still need to be considering Jeff's Brands. So Jeff's Brands finished the day today at 27.5 cents. She was up a little over 23%. Now, this is another hot penny stock on the major exchange. Easier to trust these stocks because there's a lot more rules up there they have to abide by. There's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. So that's where you want to be trading. Transactions are free up there, so it isn't going to cost you anything to trade. And you get to trade pre-market, aftermarket, which you never get to do with OTC. And let me tell you, folks, there's some great opportunities pre-market, aftermarket. It's worth paying attention to those periods. So what is Jeff's Brands all about? Well, they tell us here that Jeff's Brands uses the latest market analysis techniques to create winning consumer products and make them lead the market. Our logistics, development, and marketing strategies turn these great ideas into top selling products. Still not clear? Let's get some more information at the website. So they tell us here, only the best brands are sourced by our expert team. We use the latest machine learning methods to sift diamonds from the rough and find the brands that turn into major success stories. Our logistics and marketing strategies turn their great ideas into the top selling products on the market. We're not done. <laughs> Jeff's Brands is transforming the world of e-commerce by creating and acquiring products and turning them into what we believe to be market leaders. We started this company after recognizing how much unrealized growth potential is out there. Through our stellar team's insight into the FBA Amazon business model, we're using both human capability and advanced technology to take products to the next level. We started Jeff's Brands to tap into the incredible growth potential of e-commerce. We acquire the most promising products, find opportunities to create our own, and turn them into all market leaders. Now, what I'm going to do, I don't normally do, I'm going to share a bit of this video with you because they really explain what they do and you need to understand it because it's a great concept and I'll pick it up from there. Let's go through the process of how we identify a successful acquisition. Our AI algorithm maps all the stores that are available to purchase on Amazon. We evaluate the store based on its performance and compare it with the business market. For example, in January 2021, 
our algorithm identified three anomalies regarding this potential acquisition. First, the store was based on organic search only, without any marketing campaigns. Second, it didn't have a website for direct sales. And third, all its products were marked out of stock in the beginning of December 2020, meaning the store missed out the entire Christmas shopping hype of 2020. From these anomalies, we learn that this store is underpriced and far from its full potential, which means it's a great opportunity. So we bought it and implemented our insights. And you can see here that after one year, our toy store became a bestseller. It owns the largest market share among all others, and the revenue has skyrocketed from $2.5 million in 2020 to almost $4.7 million in 2021. This model proves itself time after time, store after store. We don't really know anything about toys, darts, or kitchen tools, but we are experts in selling them. While today we act on the multi-billion dollar Amazon marketplace, we can apply our model to other platforms as well, making Jeff's Brands an entity with an immense potential of growth. Jeff's Brands. Not retail. Data. So now you know the process for how they identify and discover these undervalued companies, turn them around and make them successful. The question is, have they got anything yet? Have they got any products? Have they got any companies? Oh yes, lots of them folks. We get that information looking at the news, but not that news. <laughs> That's the most recent news over the last two months, which we are gonna look at, but there's a lot more news we need to consider. So I've jumped over here to Yahoo Finance. Tons of news over here. Now we are gonna only headline the news like bullets. We're not gonna dive into any of these. And there are a lot of bullets and I did have them highlighted so that I knew which ones I was gonna read. But anytime I made a mistake, it blundered the whole page and I had to start over. So now I am just gonna stutter and stumble through these and hopefully you'll forgive me. <laughs> But there is lots of stuff here, folks. It tells us the different countries they're in, the different products they're selling, the different deals they've made. Starting with a reverse stock split 11 months ago of one in seven. Now we've got a super duper low float. Not that I know what it is. Our outstanding share count is about 1.2 million and our float is gonna be less than that. So whatever it is, it is really, really low. Jumping into the news. Jeff Brands commences sales of its new product line targeting the bed bug outbreak in France. Sounds like there's a need for their product. They've got something that fights bed bugs and they're in France. Jeff Brands subsidiary Fort continues to pursue product opportunities in a $2.8 billion growing global pest control market. I see a theme going here. And as you're going to see in the most recent news, this is what they're working on right now, their pest control market. Jeff Brand celebrates launch of new product, Keto Gummies, based on green apple cider vinegar. That sounds good. <laughs> Jeff Brands receives regulatory approvals in Spain and Netherlands to commence sales. A couple more countries under the belt. Speaking of more countries under the belt, Jeff Sprands enters the global agricultural market with exclusive worldwide distribution agreement. I have no idea what this is about. It says pest control right there. So as I said, they are really focused in on pest control and it looks like they got worldwide distribution. I don't know how many countries that covers. Jeff Brand signs exclusive distribution agreement for the sale of innovative biotech beauty hair products on Amazon. They also sign another non-binding letter of intent to acquire a 70% stake of an investment of $2 million in cutting-edge laser-based cameras, I think it is. Not quite sure there. They sign another non-binding letter of intent to invest in remote wireless electric charging technology. They are also targeting the anti-drone market with investments in advanced counter drone defense technology. We need that. You're attacked by drones, you need counter drone technology. Jeff Brands' subsidiary Fort signs exclusive distribution agreement for the sale and marketing of solar panel protection products. Lots of variety here, isn't there? This is an important one here, folks. Jeff Brands scales up the Fort brand and establishes dedicated product line in China. They have moved a facility and all of its goods over to China. 
It's a manufacturing process over there now, and I'm not quite sure what products they're working on. I do think it's pest control, but that's where a new manufacturing facility is for them over in China. Jeff Brand, since its acquisition in 2023, has generated total revenues of $5.3 million from just its Amazon sales. Jeff Brands launches innovative pest repellent product under the Fort brand, like off, like deep woods. Now, you know, both those products use DEET, and DEET was invented by the Army, and it was listed as a poison, and somehow it's on the open market, and we put this poison on us all the time, and absorbing DEET is not healthy for you. So I've got to wonder, does their product have DEET in it? What else we got going on here? Jeff Brand's revenue for 2023 ramps up to over 10 million, boosted by strategic acquisition of Fort. All good. Jeff Brand announces receipt of NASDAQ minimum bid price notification. They're under a dollar. They've been under a dollar for too long. As a matter of fact, I think they've got until October 2nd. I've got it listed right here, October 22nd. They, we, have to get this price over a dollar by October 22nd. If we don't, this stock is either going to have to do a reverse stock split. How can they do that with 1.2 million shares? So chances are they're going to end up on the OTC. And that's going to pull the price down hard. So we, the investors, have to bid this stock up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. It has to close over a dollar. It can come under a dollar during those 10 days, but it has to close over a dollar. We do that, they are out of hot water. Come on, folks, let's not let this fall down to the OTC. We got some more news here. Where are we at? Five months ago, Jeff Brand's Fort Amazon's revenues increased by 55% to $2.1 in the first quarter of 2024. Jeff Brand signs a memorandum of understanding to acquire a company operating a 100,000 square foot logistics center in New Jersey. You know they'll put that to good use because what they're doing is Amazon, fulfilled by Amazon. So the order goes directly to where the products are being stored and get packaged right there. And they have big warehouses for their own products to be packaged and shipped out immediately so we can get them fast. And then the very last piece of news, whew, we made it. Jeff's brand supports Fort's growth by leasing a new warehouse of over 10,000 square feet in the UK. They are setting up an FBA fulfilled by Amazon over in the UK, and this is their warehouse for it. So this company is growing in many countries in Europe. They're over here in America. They have got lots of products, lots of deals, and I probably didn't cover them all. All right, let's go take a look at the relative volume for Jeff today. I know it must have got hot at the end of the day. Wow, God, what a jump. She's been doing roughly 167,000 shares a day. Jeez, on the major exchange, that's under the radar. Today, she did 2.2 million. We're looking at over 10 times, 12 times her normal volume. Share structure, as I said, is down there. 1.2 million. I don't know what the insiders own, so I can't tell you what the float is, but who cares? <laughs> it's really low. Because of that low OS, we're going to have a low market cap. You take all the shares and multiply the price by it, and you end up with your market cap. We are just over a quarter million on our market cap. He gets. Diving into the company's financials. We're going to look at the last four years here. we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts, so we're looking at millions of dollars up here. Over the last four years, they've been doing pretty good. Revenues have been growing nicely. Starting off here at $2.2 million, Tripling in 2021 virtually to 6.5. Had a little bit of pullback in 2022 to 5.8. And then look, look at that push up to 10 million. But here's the problem. Compare 2023's revenues, which is about four to five times as much as 2020's. What happened to the profit? Here we're getting 50% profit. Here we're getting 10%. They need to fix that. Taking a look at the quarterlies. Eh, we got nothing here. But you know we got a balance sheet. Remembering to bring those three zeros here as well. Looking at the cash and cash equivalents, I call the bank. We got about a half a million in the bank. Total assets, we're at about 12.2 million. And look at those liabilities way down there at 3.7. So we are holding stockholder equity here of 8.5 million. Strong revenues, they are growing. 
the profits dropped. I don't understand that unless Amazon really pressed up their fees. <laughs> Outside of that, I don't know why they would have dropped, but still, things are looking good for the company. Take a look at the disclosures. Nothing here really to look at. We've got some 6Ks here that correlate to the news. We've got two of these 6Ks that are telling us about a shareholder meeting. They wanted to schedule, but they won't, not yet, so they put that off. Outside of that, there's nothing really going on here. So we have got strong revenues. Profits there just isn't as strong as it used to be. We've got stockholder equity. And honestly, we've got lots of little catalysts. Right now, they are really pushing this pest control, not just here in America, but primarily it looks like over in Europe. But they're also doing it in the Middle East. So there is a lot of growth right now in pest control, and I expect a lot of money to come in because bugs are everywhere. <laughs> that is not stopped because of economics or borders or beliefs. Everybody has bugs and everybody wants a cure. And if this company's got one, they can make some big money doing it. Now, what I really like about this company the most right now is the chart, except it's already broke out, folks. I found this earlier in the day and did all my due diligence for it. Came back and just glanced at the chart before I started the video and ay yi yi she broke out. I knew she would. Our atypical breakout charts do. But that doesn't mean we're out of luck. Because you know the initial breakout over a 200 always comes back down most of the time. Bounces on that 200 and then you get a push off and a run. And that's probably what we're looking at now. Let's go see if that's what the case is. You know, I had to laugh when I came and opened up the chart because I made it sound like you've missed out on something. We've already had the breakout. Well, we did. It's right there. Right there. <laughs> Does it look like you're missing out on this chart? Folks, we've got a huge, gigantic gap here. This started falling up here at about $3.20, which is virtually a thousand percent just covering that gap. And our 50%, if you throw the fib, is right about there at about a buck sixty from where we're at. I mean, folks, we're looking at 500% run there. And that's where I think it's going to push to. I think we're going to push up to this area here. So we are looking at ticker JFBR on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. We had a very short-lived high here of $5.95. This was back at the beginning of January. I guess you could say her average high is closer to $3.80. And when she did hit this point here, she fell fast and hard. Struggled to stay there, and then the floor just fell out from underneath her, and I have no idea why. And she fell from this 320 down to 37 cents, and just went sideways until, you see that little green push right there, the 200 started to get close. This could do absolutely nothing. There's no climbing until this gets down. So it just sits down here waiting for it to get close. Once it got close, it made a jump. Hello, hello, see me, I'm here. Then she came down, bounced off of our friendly 200 haul, this blue line here, bounced off of it once, bounced off it twice, and took off to and through the 200. I tell you this, folks, all the time. It likes to slap the price. And when did it break out? When the 200 went flat. When she went flat, she made her move. Now, the initial breakout normally comes back down and bounces. So we had an initial run here from about 20 cents up to 73. That gives us 350% gains. Get out, get out. She comes back down, hits the 200, get back in. She runs from 30 cents up to 65. You've got yourself another 100% run there. She came back down, struggled. To stay around the 200 but couldn't do it even though it was flat and climbing she could not hold it and she fell down she came down and right in this zone her magic started to occur she was underneath all the ma's here started going sideways crossing the ma's as she's just walking sideways she got up got excited once she got on top of her 50 fell back to the 200 Landed on her 50. She keeps getting her balance on the 200, floating on the 50. There you go. A push off of the 200 haul, a slap in the ass, bam. There it goes, up through every single MA, to and through the 200. I knew this was going to happen. I saw this much earlier in the day. 
maybe noon, no, one o'clock in the afternoon. And she was underneath that 200. And I knew, I knew this was going to break out. And she did. All of our MAs right now are turned up. Our 200 haul is pushing up. Everything looks great. In most cases, now I've already looked at the short chart so I can get ahead of myself here. In most cases, I would tell you to watch for a pullback. Watch for this to come back down because the initial breakouts don't normally keep climbing. That doesn't mean they don't ever, just means they don't normally. And I'm expecting a pullback to the 200 and a bounce. No, don't expect that. I'll share with you why I think so on the shorter time frames. Now, before we go anywhere, let us get some supports and resistances. Won't this be fun? All right, I can get a couple of small ones down here off of these. My supports and resistances help me to make trades, folks. What I'm doing is looking for places where the price changes directions. See how it bounces here? Boink comes up, boink comes up. So I put a line there. We got another one down here right here where all of this is laying, right? Now you can also put them on the top, absolutely, wherever it bangs its head. We got it banging its head here, here, and over here. So we've got a couple here. But where am I gonna get the rest of them? I mean, seriously, if this decides that it wants to break out, <laughs> there is nowhere to get supports here. Just can't do it. So what I'm gonna do, now I could go all the way up here, folks, and put my Fibonacci, which is what I'm going to use now to get the rest of my supports and resistances. I could use that all the way up here at the top, but I'm only going to concentrate here. Later, I'll come back here. So I'm going to put a Fibonacci at the top of this bar right there. Just poke it and come down to the bottom. Always start at the top and come down. You see how my lines are going up the screen instead of down. And then poke the bottom from top to bottom. These white lines are supports and resistances that are not attached to any historical price point, which is normally where I get mine, but they're valid. They're based on algorithms, and I don't know how that works, but we can trade off of them, and the price is going to respect them. So now we've got our supports and resistances. I know where to get in and out of trades. That's what these do for me. These are like speed bumps. Every time it approaches one of these, it'll normally slow down. That's where I'll take my exit. I'll sell 50% if I'm in a day trade. When she goes over it, she starts to pick up speed. Working to the next speed bump. I normally get in just over them. I don't do anything on the lines. I get out of them underneath and I get in over top. So we are looking at a breakout scenario right now. Beautiful, right? And look at our volume. Volume has been growing for the last three or four days, getting stronger, really stronger, and oh my God, strong. Our oscillators right now are all pointed up. Every single one of them is climbing, and we are currently in the overbought on the RSI, just under 75. And don't let that scare you. You want overbought. Yes, it's going to come down sooner or later, but we're not in it long enough to worry about it. We're going to take that gain as it's running. Let's come on down now to our one hour chart. Now that we've got our supports and resistances, we can see how she's behaving. So she was basically going sideways here. She was underneath the 200 for a while, on top of it for a while, and then we had our classic crouch and pounce. This is just like a cat. Come down just a couple inches and then have a huge jump up and everybody's freaking out here. Why is it falling? Why is it falling? It's setting itself up and that's exactly what it did. Just came down up under and through everything. All of our MAs are turned up right now, including our 200, floating on that nine day SMA, pushing through our supports and resistances now, hitting her head on this one at 31 and breaking this one down here at 26. And all of our oscillators are still monsters, still pushing to the moon. Look at these big, huge green bars. Lots of positive energy here, folks. Let's take a look at our five day, 15 minute. It's beautiful. Now here's the reason I don't expect a pullback on the four hour chart back to the 200, which I normally would expect. It is this even spread on our MAs here. We've got our 200, 200 haul, 50, 
20, and the 9 that she's floating on. Look how evenly combed they are, evenly spaced. If they were too far spread, if the price and the 9 was way the heck up there, yeah, she's going to come back down. But this looks like it's ready to run. Everything is set up perfectly like a highway. I don't think she's going to pull back, folks. I think she's going to bounce her way up the hill. All of our MAs look perfect. Our oscillators look good, too. PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing like our MACD. They are cousins, in case you didn't know that. The MACD uses the whole price, and the PPO, percentage oscillator, uses a percentage of the price. And our RSI is kind of going sideways right now at 59, but it's looking good to me. Now, let's take a look at our five-day, five-minute. It's very strong, folks. She was going sideways, took that crouch, got up on top of the 200. Look at there. Bounced off our 200 haul, jumped up, got up on top of her 20. Now, that's what she's floating on here. She is laying on the 10. She's floating above the 20. And when she needs balance, she puts these wicks down and she tags our friend, the 200 haul. Look at that. Beautiful. Even into the aftermarket hours, she is continuing this habit. Look at how close all of our MAs are. 200 is turned up. Everything looks really, really good on the short charts. I am not expecting a pullback to the 4-hour 200. Oscillators here, and eh, they've been wobbling. Up and down, up and down, up and down, but they've been going uphill. Now, we are starting to get a divergence here. Let me zoom in on that. A divergence is when one of your oscillators is doing the opposite of what it probably should be doing. Our price is rising. Our PPO is rising. Though it's ever so gradual, it is rising. Our MACD is not. Our MACD is falling right now, going the opposite direction. Normally, if you have the price going up and an oscillator going down, something's going to have to snap back into position. And when that happens, it normally closes the mouth and allows less volume. So you normally see a pullback. Now, this isn't a drastic divergence. It's just a light one. So we may get a pullback or a bounce to the 50 and then a push off. I'm still liking this chart, folks. There is a lot of due diligence you can do here, folks. You saw how much news I went through. I skipped a bunch of headlines, and we didn't go into any of it. So by just reading the news, you're going to be miles ahead of what I've shared with you. And you know what I always say. Go ahead. Say it with me. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. Absolutely right. See you, folks.